Again, thank you so much for having us this opportunity to, to speak to you. The issue of um, coronavirus is something that is now on our doorsteps. We have been hearing about the coronavirus since last year in November, somewhere there. And it appeared as if it was something that was um, away from our eyes and couldn't touch us. But uh, alas, this is with us now, just on our doorsteps. Maybe the first thing that I want to say is that um, there is a myth around it that um, coronavirus is a curse from God. I think as a church, uh, we would want to say that this is a curse from God. It is something that is in existence. It is there, just like any other virus. And uh, God is not trying to punish anyone for that, because then we want to ask, is God selective in the way he punishes people? Which people should be punished? Because that just means those that have died sinned more to God than others that are living. Of course, that's not the case. The thing that we need to do as a people is to respond to it collectively. And for this, we would want to appreciate what the government so far has done in their response by ensuring that um, there is a serious um, screening at the points at the points of entry, and of course uh, testing, which is following, which is which is um, uh, followed up, so that uh, in an event that there is anybody who is found to be affected by the virus, they are put on treatment straight away. So our people should not believe in these myths around going around. What they need to do is listen to what the uh, government is uh, uh, directing us through the Ministry of Health by ensuring that uh, um, there is social distancing, of course, uh, the washing of hands, which I'm glad to see that uh, this is happening in almost all trading centers. There are a lot of people around there or put um, uh, washing basins around. This is the way it should be. And of course, there is need for people to stay at home because the situation as it is, there are certain gaps because the people started coming into the country maybe many, many, many months ago. And there are those that entered the country without maybe being screened. So self-quarantine um, is very important. The 14 day, days grace period that we have been given, so that at the end of it all, oh, there, there should be a review to see where we stand. We would also like to appeal to government to ensure that uh, our health workers are well protected, because that's another area of concern because in most cases they are performing their jobs in the normal way. But there are a lot of people that are going to these hospitals who need treatment, and therefore their um, protection is, is of great importance because it's possible for clients to pass on the virus to them or the health workers to pass the virus on to the people that are seeking treatment in those facilities. So there is a great need that our health workers are well protected and we want to applaud them for their uh, commitment to ensure that the uh, uh, coronavirus is contained. Um, to the general public and especially those from the church, it's important that uh, this is the time when people come in the name of God and say they know the treatment and they may be told that they're going to be prayed for and that uh, they should uh, not listen probably to what government is saying. They need to be very, very, very careful. This is not the time to be shouting and receive and the things like that. This is the time to listen to scientific uh, regulations that have been put across. Coronavirus is real. And it has to be attacked 
in a scientific manner. And I believe that scientifically, or science itself, is God-given. And if we're going to attack and uh, contain coronavirus in a scientific manner, that again is a gift from God. So none should be lied to that a certain papa somewhere has got the powers to contain coronavirus in their own way. The same applies to the Ngangas. I know there will be people coming up with herbs and all sorts of roots saying that they've got the cure for coronavirus. Again, our people need to be cautious because we don't want people to take advantage of the situation to make quick money out of nothing. So what we need to do as a people is to work together. If we work together, the chances of containing coronavirus will be achieved. And I believe it's the same thing to the countries. We see that countries in most cases tend to work in isolation. Each country is trying to do the best they can within their own borders. But this is a virus that cuts across borders. A region like Sadiq in Southern Africa, if all the countries were to come together and work at something as a region, I think the chances of containing uh, coronavirus would be very high. Because if Zambia is by itself, Malawi by itself, Botswana by itself, maybe South Africa by itself, we may not go very far. If you look at the European, the European countries, I think that we try to do it as a European, uh, European nations. So Africa can do the same, especially the southern region here. If the governments can come together and work together, I think we'll be in a better place to contain it. What happens after all this is uh, done? Of course, there will be uh, repercussions, there will be consequences, especially with the economy. People are not able to go out and do what they normally do. They are all forced to leave the streets, and uh, as a result, people cannot uh, uh, make money for themselves. Of course, that will be uh, uh, have a serious impact on their lives. As a nation, obviously, will be impacted terribly, especially we who are linked, uh, land linked, because we depend on other countries in order to bring us uh, to bring in goods. And uh, with the closures of uh, some borders, our economy will suffer. And obviously it will take time for us to recover from the economic meltdown that is going to happen. But again, it's important that uh, coronavirus is contained. I think somebody must say that uh, it's easier for us to find ways of restating our economy. But nobody knows how to restart somebody's life once it's gone. So the important thing at the moment is to ensure that people's lives are protected within the boundaries of, of Zambia. So we can only appeal to government to work with all different stakeholders, with people with different ideas on how we can contain the virus for the good of the, of the country, for the good of everybody in the country. Thank you very much. Do you have questions? Yes, maybe, uh, uh, Lord Bishop, uh, I want to you know, some stakeholders have called for the complete drop down of the of the country because this disease is uh, mostly moved by the people. And uh, listen to the president; he uh, just announced some measures, which included the closure of some international airport. Uh, only internet Kaunda International Airport, which is operational for now. And um, do you think? this uh, 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 move which other stakeholders are calling of complete lockdown so that there is completely no any uh, ins and outs of the country would really help us fight this uh, coronavirus. My take on that one would be that uh, I want to believe that whatever government is doing they are doing it from an informed position 
I want to believe that they have brought the technocrats around with them will give them that advice. Because I think uh, the issue of a complete lockdown may not work probably for countries like Zambia because of the economic situation we find ourselves. Um, people in Zambia is hand to mouth and uh, it's quite a tricky situation. Um, if there's complete lockdown for 14 days, I don't know how many of us will survive in terms of where to get food and things like that. So I want to believe government is doing whatever they're doing from an informed position. Um, I just pray that uh, it won't get out of hand. One would want the complete lockdown, obviously, to stop the virus from spreading. Because as we are taught, the virus spreads through the mobility of the people. So if you stop people from uh, uh, moving around and uh, shut themselves out, I think that would be, would be a great help. We have seen there is some voluntary um, stoppage of uh, transport system for buses. Some bus operators have stopped uh, running their buses, which is good. I think that's why we should go. Uh, we try the voluntary one where people can stay at home um, and see how it goes. As I said earlier on, I want to believe that government, whatever the government is doing, they already done their research um, to advise the country properly. I don't think government would want their people to die from coronavirus. They want to stop that. All they need to do is to do it in, uh, the right way. Yes. Mm. Yeah, maybe because on the coronavirus issue itself, it was important that the platform that are available for the dissemination of information is mm. uh, used extensively. Mm. And in this regard, I would like to make an, an honest appeal to government to give an amnesty to Prime TV television. Okay. That um, whatever happened, let them put it in the past and allow Prime TV to carry out the, um, the sensitization programs just like another media house. The situation that we find ourselves that we need every platform for awareness campaigns and uh, Prime TV should be one of them because if you allow it um, to other, especially the social media, there is a lot of uh, misinformation going on on that platform. But with established houses like yourselves with known physical addresses, I think uh, you are more responsible in the way you disseminate that information. And government should just get uh, make use of every available media house with established um, uh, routes to help in the dissemination of this information. We need every media house on board to help us. So my appeal to government is uh, please give primitive and amnesty, reconcile, work together for the good of this country. That's my, my appeal. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. It's done. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Lord Bishop. Mm -hmm.